Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is April 24th, uh, 2019, and it's uh, 11 p.m. I'm using my new microphone. I The video I made previous to this was about this new microphone, and it looks so good, but... I just, right now, am thinking that the headset that I've been using is just better. But I'm not sure. Uh, so, I'm just not ready to make a judgment about it. Uh, but this is also sort of a test. Uh, this is one of these microphones that it just seems like you have to be up close to it. And uh, I had two microphone stands. I gave one to my daughter and then the one that I, identical microphone stands. The one I've got here is missing the little screw, sort of, that goes in there that keeps it from sliding. And I can't find a screw, and so I need to work on that. And then if I'm, then I'll put the microphone. I'll take it off the desk, and I'll put it, uh, put it up, and maybe, maybe I can get it. <clears throat> right now I've got this uh, pretty damn close, but it's right on the desk, and I think, and my keyboard is. I'm not, I'll actually type, well, I don't want to type now. Uh, using Manicam for this, uh, I've messed with so much stuff and changed so much stuff and learned so much and then forgot it and make the same mistakes over again. This John William King, who was executed, I think today here in Texas, I'm in Texas, Remember what, 15 or 20 years ago, <clears throat> down here in a small town in Texas. I wasn't living in Texas then. Uh, <clears throat> three white men in a pickup truck were driving down the road at night, and they saw a black man, and they stopped and asked if he wanted to ride, and then uh, they started beating on him, and... Uh, then they tied him to the back of the pickup truck and they drug him for three miles. And the police later said that forensic evidence and what have you indicated that for two of those miles he was still alive. And during the third mile his body just came, you know, apart. And two of the men were sentenced for the death, you know, to a death, to a death penalty and one got life in prison. They not long ago executed the one guy and this guy was apparently the ringleader and he just got executed if you watched my videos and read my blogs or something over the years you know i'm opposed to the death penalty but if you're going to have the death penalty uh, these three guys deserve you know deserve the death penalty well the uh German bank is uh, starting to provide uh, Trump's financial records to the New York Attorney General. And you will, of course, probably remember that uh, if state charges are brought, uh, the President of the United States cannot pardon anyone on state charges. He can only pardon for federal crimes. So... Jumping back over here, you see that parents are charged after boy's body is found. And a couple here admitted sexually assaulting kids on video, and they were sentenced to 60 years each. Do you want to see them? There they are. The age of the kids were... 
eight months old to 14 years old, and there are apparently like 25 possible victims. Uh, the Parkland shooter has inherited money, and his public defenders say he should get new attorneys, you know, in other words, use the money that he has received. Bill Cosby wants out on bail. Putin and Kim Jong-un are holding their first summit. Anderson Cooper, CNN, says <laughs> no president should speak like Elmo. I don't know, I think Elmo kind of uh, speaks kind of cute. What in the world? The tax overhaul means that some Gold Star families paying much higher taxes on survivor benefits. Gold Star families here in the United States are families that have had a son or a daughter or you know, father, I guess it could be, could be a mother too, uh, who has, you know, died, who was in the military and has died, you know, in the military. Uh, uh, tax overhaul, I didn't know we had a tax overhaul, I knew we had a tax that, I know they cut the taxes on the really, really wealthy President Donald Trump's tax overhaul is forcing some military families to pay thousands of dollars more in taxes on their survivor benefits, according to a nonprofit organization that helps these families. Spouses who signed over their earnings benefits to their children, a move that is done in order to ensure the family of a deceased service member temporarily receives their benefits, saw an increase in taxes this year because a new tax law reclassifies how children's assets are taxed. In the past year, Gold Star families who chose this option paid an average of 12 to 15 percent in taxes on the income. Following the tax reform laws that went into effect in 2018, the tax rate jumped to 37 uh, percent. I don't know. Do not know. I mean, I just, you know, the Republicans cut the taxes on the people who are, I mean, under, you know, the top two percent, the people who are rolling in money like Scrooge McDuck. Remember that cartoon or the uh, comic book and whatever, Scrooge McDuck, you know, the, and he had the swimming pool filled with money and coins and he'd go diving into a swimming pool filled with no water, just you know, money or, or he'd have a bulldozer in there or whatever. That's, that's the ultra rich here and Republicans insist on cutting their taxes and screwing the little people. I mean, their taxes shouldn't be cut at all. They should be paying their fair share, and they're not. Um, but, and not only that, you know, they, uh, you know, Trump and the Republicans cut the taxes for these ultra rich, and then uh, Trump and, and Republicans, the, have said, uh, oh, because we're getting less, less money in from taxes, we're going to have to cut Social Security, we're going to have to cut Medicare, we're going to have to cut Medicaid, and I don't know what else. So, it's just, you know, Comedian Tom Arnold secretly recorded phone calls with Michael Cohen. Why was the Wall Street, Wall Street Journal has 
obtained audio from a secret re recorded Just phone. in to CNN about President Trump's former fixer and lawyer Michael Cohen during a phone call secretly recorded by actor and comedian Tom Arnold. Uh, strange twist there. Cohen revealing that he believes parts of his guilty plea are a lie. This is according to a new report by the Wall Street Journal. Let's check. The Wall Street Journal. Let's see. I guess CNN right now, is that where we go to see it? Nope. I guess we have to watch the video of it, if that is, you know. Don't want to watch the video. Just in to CNN about President Trump's former fixer and lawyer Michael Cohen during a phone call secretly recorded by actor and comedian Tom Arnold. Uh, strange twist there. Cohen revealing that he believes parts of his guilty plea are a lie. This is according to a new report by the Wall Street Journal. Let's check in now with CNN's Kara Scannell. What can you tell us about this call? That's right, Brian, these are strange bedfellows. So according to the journal, this call took place on March 25th between Michael Cohen and Tom Arnold. And in the call, Michael Cohen is disavowing the crimes that he pleaded guilty to. Now remember, he pleaded guilty to two hush money payments involving, uh, two campaign finance violations involving those hush money payments he made on behalf of the president. But he also pleaded guilty to five tax fraud counts, one count of lying to a bank, and another count of- oh my God. Looks like, according to, I don't know what the, you know, that Bernie Sanders is the new number one in the Democrats' uh, 2020 ranking. Of course, it's a little bit early. Oh, wow, I did a, a whole, <laughs> I did a whole YouTube video on this. Uh, state Senator receives 1,700 decks of cards after saying nurses play cards at work. Uh, she slammed, she was slammed for nurses, for saying nurses play cards for a considerable amount of the day. Uh, 60, 6, 650, I can't even, numbers or so, 650,000 nurses signed a petition to have her shadow a nurse for a day. She accepted. Well, let's just see if I can find my video. Uh, where would it be? Down here. Well, let's just go to... Uh, just go to uh, where? Video manager, that'll do it. I could have just went to videos, couldn't I? I could have just done this. Here, let me see if I can get over there. No, I'm already, you know. But here it is. It was a hour and 17 minute video. And... Uh, and it said... 325 views and I did that on April 20th okay what should I do let's go here okay let's go to this story let's go up here to uh, copy this, then go over here to, okay, well, wait, this is the wrong browser, it doesn't have... More that. than uh, half a million people have signed a petition. Ah. I don't, this isn't the browser that has the, uh, thing to shorten the URL. Well, I'll just do it anyway. Okay, go back here. No, where is the video here? Okay, go down here to 
Nurses play cards. Okay, let's go to let's go right here. Okay. Let me, I can paste it here, I guess. But I want to, using the wrong browser, but I can uh, jump over here. Let's see, 1,700 decks. Desk. Dex. Okay, so I've added to that. I need to save it. Okay. I don't spend enough time. I'm, I don't spend enough time making a tech good tags, and I actually pay for one of the things. One of the programs that I pay for, one of the things they that it does is uh, helps you. You know, helps you create good tags. May twenty fourth, I got to go to the uh, doctor that checks my skin for cancer. May twenty fourth. And this is April 24th. Oh, okay, a month. Okay, I took my medicine for today. This is for tomorrow. Okay, let's see here. Let's go back to CNN. I'm just playing around here. I'm going to turn off the, you know, monetization here because of whenever I talk politics or whatever, I turn it off. And plus two, probably, because uh, you could hear some snippets of CNN or something, something they pro probably would have, somebody would have filed a, copyright complaint or something, so I'll just turn it off ahead of time. Trump at war with the Democrats. He's going to fight all the subpoenas. Democrats look to courts as White House stone walls on subpoenas. Well, Tesla reports huge loss, seven hundred and two million dollar loss. Salmonella outbreak sickens, sickens one hundred and seventeen people in ten states. A rapper shoots an armed intruder trying to steal a car. A country, let's see, a country struggles without internet for a year. An entire country? What, because that North Korea? Canadians. Must be like Northern Canada or something.
Did I say Canada? Canadians. How come he's talking about Chad? How do you run a digital business when your country's president has shut down the internet? Let's see. Uh, I think, what's can't, what's the, oh, it's not can't, okay, it's not Canadians. It's, I guess, Shad, that's okay, Shadians, I guess. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about Africa. The only thing I know about Africa is back when I, you know, the, when it was like French Equatorial Africa and Belgian Congo and Katanga and whatever. I don't know any of these. I don't know where Shad is. I should. I don't. I thought it was Canada. <laughs> uh, uh, where did I leave off here? There is so much good stuff here. If you look between the... Uh, Somebody saw a widow eating alone, and he did this. I guess he did a good deed or something. High school implements a dress code for parents. Okay, I bet it's a Christian school. I don't think it's a public school. We'll see. Nope, a Houston high school has implemented a dress code for parents. Uh... At what? Oh, I got the sound turn. What I wear should never be an issue. I'm not revealing. I'm not doing anything. I don't have any weapons. So let's see. At one high school in Texas, parents can't roll out of bed in the morning to drop off their kids anymore. James Madison High School in Houston has implemented a dress code targeted towards parents that has riled up some people. Uh, the principal wrote a letter to parents that they cannot enter school grounds while wearing pajamas or revealing clothing. The school is also prohibiting parents from wearing leggings, sagging pants, low rider shorts, short dresses, low-cut tops, women can't wear a satin cap, hair curlers, shower caps, or bonnets on their heads. Uh, yeah, that sounds like, I mean, you know, that sounds like way, you know, and the parents can complain and they can do what they want to, you know, boycott. They can do all kinds of stuff. I don't know how the school, you know, if I were a parent, I would just drop the kids off, on, you know, even drop them off a half a, you know, drop them off. Don't eat, don't pull into the, uh, don't pull, unless you're endangering the kids or something, you know, unless they're going to get attacked or cars are going to hit them or something. Drop up the, you know, drop the kids off on that, and if you're going to drop them off on the street, don't sit there and talk to them and and whatever. Have them ready to go. Have them get out of the car and go, and then show up at the, uh, you know, board of education's uh, or the PTA meetings. All of you who object to it, show up at the PTA meetings. I never went to a PTA meeting in my life. Uh, that's not a good thing, you know. Uh, show up at the PTA meetings and show up at the uh, Board of Education office and, and get together, you know, with the rest of you and go in and uh, don't block any stuff, don't, you know, break anything, don't just go out and say, line up, fill up, you know, maybe you have, you know, if there's a lot of you, it's maybe kind of crowded hallway there and, and uh, then go to a city council meeting. You know, and uh, I'd handle it, you know. Call them on the telephone. 
Yeah, it sounds really... I don't understand some of this, you know. I don't understand it hardly, you know. Are they... A bunch of this is ridiculous, but, you know, are they really... Going there... I don't know, it's just stupid, you know. Oh, well. Do we want to meet the baby rhino who's making history? I don't think so. Let's go back to this thing. State lawmaker receives backlash over nurses' comments. A Washington State senator has drawn the ire of nurses after remarks... More than uh, half a million. After remarks she made suggesting that nurses in smaller hospitals probably play cards for a considerable amount of time. You know, I think the state lawmaker is probably going to show up at a hospital and is going to need an IV. And she may have really good veins. She may have never had problems before. But... They may have to stick her seven or eight times to get the IV. And they may decide, of course, not as bad for a woman getting, you know, a catheter put in. Now, if it was a man, that's, I've had it done. Anyway, of course, I'm kidding. Nurses are going, you know, they're not going to, You know, they're not going to do that. Doctors aren't going to do, you know, aren't, aren't going to do that. They're not going to, you know, the Hippocratic Oath or whatever. They're going to treat you no matter what. But this, and this was not any, uh, nobody had anything against me or whatever. I've always had excellent veins and I've, Worked hospital security for 30 years. There was a few times that a, like, there was an LPN, a kind of an elderly LPN, and she needed to, I'm not sure, maybe they couldn't start IVs before. But anyway, she had to do X number of IVs, and then she would be certified, and she was worrying, you know, she'd done all except one. She had one more to go, and when a patient would come in, you know, she'd ask the RN, you know, if it could, uh, you know, and then I think sometimes maybe uh, the LP ends it. No, I don't want to do that one, you know, knowing it's a hard stick or something. And I was working, and uh, I can't remember her name now, a real nice lady. I said, if it would it count if you started an IV, you know? Well, they wouldn't have to actually do the, you know, just do the stick, you know, and uh, and uh, the RN, of course, said, yeah, that'll, ca that'll work. That'll work. She'll be then, you know. So I, and she did it right away, and that was, you know, that was it. She had her stick, and she was okay to go. Um, but anyway, I always I had nurses would, uh, I did a few other things like that, you know. So yeah, here I am, you know. Um, but... Nurses would always say, you have great, you know, great veins, you know. And now that I need them, <laughs> apparently they're not as... When I it passed out down at the Walgreens back a few years ago, and my heart, I passed out and my heart rate was 25, that's not good. I made a vi I have a video here on that, by the way. Um... I made a video in the ambulance, very short, you know, with my cell phone, you know. Uh, but they had trouble, the uh, paramedics, getting a line in me. They were trying on each side, they had a line, and I never, never had trouble with that before. And then uh, when I had this leg infection, I scraped my leg on my bed frame, and... I just, you know, I put alcohol on it or hydrogen, I think hydrogen, I didn't do hydrogen, you know you're not supposed to do hydrogen peroxide for something like that. Anyway, 
And it just, I kept telling myself, oh, it's okay, it's just a scrape, you know, blah, blah, blah. Before long, I had a major infection. And I took an Uber down to the uh, emergency room, and the Uber the hospital had changed where the emergency room was. The Uber driver couldn't find the emergency room, which is, uh, you know, not surprising. But anyway, hot, I, it was hot weather, really hot, and uh, the Uber driver was just trying. I said, "What that? Just here, I can, I can get you know." So she dropped me off, and then the emergency room, and then finally I saw a sign moved, an arrow pointing or whatever. So I had to walk about a block or a block and a half to get to the new location for the emergency room. And I went in, and uh, they saw my leg, you know, and uh, they said, wow, you're going to be admitted. Uh, this is not good, something to that effect. And then they said, uh, how did you get here? And I said, I took an Uber. You took an Uber? I said, yeah. Uh, so anyway, a real nice nurse comes in, you know, okay, I have to start an IV on you. And she sticks me right away. That was great. And then she goes over to the, the name escapes me, it's the, uh, where they drop in the uh, used needles or in the sharps container. Oh, you know, it's, it's fixed so you can't get anything out. And an awful lot of nurses and people get stuck you know, they actually stick themselves with the, that's a big thing for hospitals, to prevent employees from accidentally sticking themselves with dirty needles and stuff. So she went over and she dropped my blood that she had drawn in the vial. Oh yeah, she was drawing blood, that was it. That was it. And she dropped the blood in there along with the dirty needle. And she said right away, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. She said, I've only done that once before in all the years of being a nurse. I said, no problem, no problem. And she said, I'm so sorry. And I said, not a problem. And she came back, tried to stick me. Couldn't get it. Tried to stick me again, couldn't get it. Tried to stick me again, couldn't get it. And she says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'll get somebody else to, you know, to do it. And I said, that's okay. She said, I'm sorry. And I said, no problem. And she laughed. And then I was kind of surprised. Sent a real young guy, in, you know, in. and uh, so he stuck me once, didn't get it. Stuck me twice, didn't get it. Stuck me a third time, didn't get it. Stuck me a fourth time, didn't get it. And I thought, how long is this going to go on? And then he said, I'm gonna, I'll be back. I'm, you know, I'm gonna have somebody else. And she, you know, he left, and the nurse that had originally stuck me. She came in, and she stuck me once, and she got it. And when she got it, I said, I'll hold the blood while you drop the needle in the, uh, in the container. And she laughed. So that was not a good state. Well, see, I have, that was not a good state at the hospital. If you, watched, if you watched my videos, you know I ended up leaving AMA. I think if I'd have been there another couple of days, I probably would not have survived. Um, uh, that's it's unfortunate because I, you know, uh, and to one. I'm not sure if she was a nurse or if she was, an, uh, no, I think she was a nurse, I believe. Yeah, I think she was a nurse. That, that night, she was, I asked her at some point, you know, that when I, I was there for six days or seven, and I said, uh, where are you originally from? She said, Africa, and I, I didn't say uh, Africa's a big place, you know, or whatever. I just thought, okay, I think maybe I maybe I said something I shouldn't have to her. 
and uh, so I just didn't. But then uh, the hospital uh, once started a IV, and they said they had, or they had the IV in me, and a nurse came in and said, "I'm going to put this in your IV. It'll be I forget what it was for and everything." And uh, so anyway, by the way, I have a terrible phobia of vomiting and of choking on my vomit or whatever. This is, I mentioned this before several times in videos. So anyway, the nurse starts to push the medication, IV med, into the uh, tubing. It just push it in, thank God. The nurse, well, not thank God in a couple of ways. The nurse was doing it very slowly. Uh, and anyway, I right away, I immediately, as soon as it, I said, a stop, I'm sick. Oh, I am sick. And she said, you know, she said, okay. And then she said, now, nah. and she already had it with her. She says, this will counteract that. And she, uh, and then, so... Anyway, I uh, I said, "What's the name of that?" I want to make sure. You know, they get. In fact, they wrote it on the whiteboard there. You know, the name of it. And uh, so then I was uh, very careful whenever they're coming in and they're going to do something or other. And if they usually, well, they're supposed to tell you, you know. And uh, usually they did, but uh, this one nurse. The one from Africa, uh, you know. So I thought, well, maybe back to you know. I think she said Africa because maybe she came from uh, a country where they have you know something Ebola or something. Maybe she was not wanting to say you know I wasn't worried about getting you know <laughs> or anything like that. But I just thought she'd say you know. Anyway. Uh, and she had an accent, and I have hearing loss in both ears. And if there's also noise going on, it makes it, you know, worse. I think that's a condition of the brain or whatever gets used to a certain thing, and it rewires itself. And if there's any kind of noise, when I was working as a welder, right out fresh out of high school or whatever, I worked at a place where we made railroad cars, and it was really noisy. People, men pounding on steel, you know, with sledgehammers, chippers, you know, that uh, compressed air was causing it to chip away metal and all uh, tremendous noise. The supervisor would be standing right next to me, screaming into my ear, and I could not make out what he was saying. I couldn't hear what he was saying at all. Uh, that was because of my, now, I mean, I could hear, if we were in a quiet place, I could hear, you know, you wouldn't need to, you don't need to scream. You don't, now you don't need to scream. But if I'm here and I have, I'm watching a Netflix movie or whatever, and my son comes to the door and uh, says anything, you know, pizza's ready or whatever, I can't hear it. My brain or my, it's not the ears really, it's the brain. It, even if I have a telephone, I put in telephone to my ear, if there's something going here, music or something like that, my brain, your brain, unless you have hearing problems like I do, your brain automatically knows, okay, this is the important thing and it zeroes in on this and it just tunes that out or whatever. It doesn't do it that way, but this way, this is just as, you know, so it's a problem. And why did I get on this subject is a problem. Uh, oh, but anyway, back to the hospital. Uh, so this nurse came in, and, you know, I love computers, always have. I had one of the first computers, you know that uh, you could get that was like I couldn't wow a dream you know having my own personal computer uh, 
I love computers. I love high tech stuff, and it's great. Well, you know, it's even great now. I don't have the you know the doctors come in the doctor's office or whatever, and the nurse and everybody is they're looking at the uh, laptop, you know, and that I mean, but they do you know they do. Oh, hi, Mr. Howard, and how are you feeling today? They they do that kind of stuff, but they're looking there. That's great, you know, because they. Oh, I see you. You don't want to have this exam done, and uh, oh, I can't see this, and blah blah blah. And, and why did you leave the hospital? AMA, and they look at that stuff. But in the hospital, you know, they had the mon had the monitor up there, and they come in and they're looking at it. And I'm back, you know, I'm back there, and anyway. Uh, Also with my hearing, I have trouble really with people that aren't speaking the language they should be speaking like English, the way God intended and the way God speaks English, you know. So uh, anyway, she comes in, she's looking up there and she says, I have to give you this, or, you know, a shot or something or other, or you know, the IV thing or whatever. And I said, what is it? And then she said something. And then I said, uh, what, what is it? And she says it again, still looking at the monitor. I'm back there. And uh, then uh, I have to ask her again. And then she turns around and she says it again and she's looking at me, but she doesn't, you know, she's got an accent. She doesn't, I don't know what she's saying. So I said uh, something like, it, it's not that, you know, the one there that's written down not to get me or whatever. And she says, I don't know what she says. And uh, so, and that's my, that was the, like my, the day, that's the day I left AMA, not because of that, although that probably might have played into a little tiny bit, but I'd been there for six days, unable to eat anything because of this powerful antibiotic they were giving me, the expensive one for my leg, and plus it also I was totally nauseated, and the entire six days, 24 hours a day, the days that I was there, I was terrified all the time that I was going to vomit and that, uh, you know, I thought I'd die. It's a phobia I have. I mean, it's because I back, oh my, you know, back 20, 30, I don't know how many years ago, a long time ago, the Hong Kong flu came through and the, or something, another flu came through. Each, you know, the first time it came through, one flu came through, I got the flu. It's unusual for me to get flu or sick or anything. I came through, I got it, I had to vomit, a lot of people, they just, okay, I'll vomit and I'll feel better, you know, when they do, and they just vomit and then they, they, it's, you know, that's it. Not me, I know, okay, yeah, gotta, you know, gotta vomit or whatever, but I start to vomit and then I choke on it. And then I was actually kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off not able to breathe and then of course then I could then I gotta then I can breathe and that was the first time and then the next year the flu comes through again and I get it again and then I'm oh my god please I don't want to die this way I don't want to die aspirating on vomit my family would have to you know how, how did your father die or how did your you know Mrs. Howard how did your husband die uh, he aspirated on vomit, and then everybody would think, "Oh, he was an alcoholic," or you know, I just, I just didn't want to die. Plus, I didn't want to die. But, and anyway, this, the, the next year, same thing, very same thing happened. I knew, okay, I gotta vomit, I gotta, you know, I gotta, uh, whatever. And then, I don't even know what my system does, but it clamped, you know, clamps down or whatever. And then there again, I'm like, you know, can't actually you know, walking around or whatever, can't breathe. So, 
I wouldn't have made a good secret agent or anybody who, you know, I wouldn't have made a good, anybody good in the military or whatever. If I were captured and they wanted information from me, I would, no, I will not, you know, God bless America, whatever. And all they'd have to do is just go, that'd be it. And I'd tell them everything they want to know, anything. You know, if, you, if they cut off my airway or whatever. I guess it's safe to put that information out. I'm 78 now, and I don't have any secrets. You know, so. But anyway, this um, well, anyway, I was there six days. I, I could not eat. I did bring the food tray in. You know, they ask you what you want. They bring it in, and and uh, I lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> but um, you know, they'd have Jello there, and I would take half a spoonful of jello and it would melt you know what is jello it's like the chilled water you know whatever and i would put half a spoonful and, and that that was all that was just i just couldn't do it and uh my daughter hillary you know she brought me hamburgers and fries or whatever i love hamburgers and fries a malt oh couldn't i couldn't eat it so I was there six days without eating, the entire time, terrified that I was going to vomit. And then, of course, I had to have a catheter put in me. I'd had one done before for, when I was in, in uh, Florida for a test. They wanted to, you know, had to go to the hospital and they put one. It wasn't I went to the emergency room, it was they made an appointment and, you know, in a couple of weeks you come in and uh, we put a catheter in, and that was my first catheter, although I had assisted in, I don't know how many, you know, help the ER nurses or whatever. Okay, this guy's drunk, belligerent, blah, 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 and, but we have to uh, put a, you know, put a catheter in him, and they pretend sometimes that they were out, you know, as soon as the catheter went in. I had my hands full, not of the penis, but of the holding the person down or whatever. Uh, but so anyway, I was not looking so. Nurse puts the catheter in me. Oh my God! You know it goes twelve in a man. It goes twelve inches, by the way. So put it in hit my prostate and the prostate prostate bled in there for a day and a half. I didn't want the catheter taken out so they could put it. They didn't ask me, you know, because the nurse, like the first one that did it all that day, was says, I think the, I think that it's looking, you know, the bag is looking like there's more urine, you know. All it was in there was blood. Actually, I got a picture of it, on, and uh, I should, I should pop that up now. And uh, the next day, you know, the, or the night shift, midnight shift nurse or whatever came on. I think she didn't want to do it, you know. I think it's looking, and I said, oh yeah, I think it's looking good too, you know. I knew it wasn't. And then the next day, find then the nurse who had done it ended up on her shift, you know. And she says, uh, we have to take the catheter out and put another one in you. Oh. So, she did. Extreme pain, but she didn't hit the prostate this time, and it filled with urine. And then, after a few days, I was having, you know, having difficulty or whatever with one thing I wasn't eating and all this other stuff. And then the urologist came through. Now, I didn't have a urologist. He came through. He's the one that, like, would see, he just popped in real, you know, it was like, hi, you know. And he came in and he said, yeah, you're going to need to, you know, whatever. And I said, so where is your office located? He, he told me, I said, I live right out in, in that area. I said, 
you're my doctor. And he says, oh, okay, great. We'll set up a, set up a thing. And he said, uh, okay, you'll be going home uh, tomorrow and then call and make an appointment. And you'll be going home in the morning, you know, tomorrow morning. I said, great. Oh, he said, uh, do you want to keep the catheter in or do you want the catheter out? And then I thought, uh, and he was in a hurry. It was like he's walking as he's saying it, you know. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is an important uh, thing. Uh, I want the catheter out, but I didn't want the catheter put back in. And I, I said, out. And he said, okay, I'll have to take it out. So he, so they come in and they take the catheter out. The, taking the catheter out is not as bad as putting it in, but it's still no fun. And then he leaves. And then the nurse is the nurse comes in or whatever, uh, your bladder isn't, you know, your bladder's retaining urine. And I said, yes, it's been doing that for years. I take water pills. And I said, I'm on water pills now, right? No, we took you off the water pills because of the medication you're taking. You can't take the, medi the, the one you're taking for the infection and take the, you know, whatever. And I said, so I have, no, you haven't been taking it. I said, I didn't know that, and uh, I said, I think I need it. And she says, oh, no. She says, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a catheter in you. And I said, uh, no, no catheter. And she says, oh, you have to have one uh, because you, you know, then I said, just give me the water pills. No, I can't do that. I said, call the urologist. Well, he's not, that one was not available. I mean, he went home and he was off, so they call another neurologist or whatever and, and the, the nurse says uh, he says cannot uh, can't do it and I said stop the uh, the antibiotic you're giving me oh can't do that I said call a different urologist and she I, she went came back I don't think she called another you know she came I'm sure the urologist probably would have said the same you know same thing can't give you that it could be bad and really bad and she says so we're gonna have to put a catheter in and I said nope I'm going to be uh, leaving the hospital AMA against medical advice and uh, she says let me get my supervisor you know supervisor or whatever and the supervisor comes up and I said I'm, I'm she says well you know and I said I know and I said but I'm going and uh, so will you sign the AMA form? And I said, sure, I'll sign the form for you. It'll make you happy. It'll make the hospital happy. Actually, if, if you are leaving a hospital for some reason, you know, like that, don't sign the AMA form. It's, it's not to your advantage, it's to their advantage. You know, why should you, you know? So I should, sure, I'll sign. And I said, uh, now, are you going to give me a script for the, med the medicine that I need to take for this, uh, you know, that I've been taking the antibiotic? No, if you, you're leaving AMA, you don't get anything. I said, uh, how about a list of the medic? Of course, I knew I could go home and immediately log in on my computer and and because I'd done that for my entire medical record and that the doctor's offices were tied in with this hospital and everything. I knew, but I said, you're not giving me, she said, you get nothing. You leave AMA, we don't give you any kind of a piece of paper or whatever. And I said, well, then I'm not signing AMA. And then she, well, you won't. And then she left and then she came back. I'm sure, you know, the, she just convinced she had to have them, you know, I'm, Hillary's on her way to pick me up. Couldn't have made it without her. You know, I would have had to wait for an Uber and uh, Uber wouldn't have been able to find the right entrance to the hospital and and I was in bad shape actually and uh, but uh, anyway finally I, I well the nurse got my daughter in Washington DC on the telephone <laughs> and they were trying to work out a deal the uh, the nurse said you know because in the at that hospital I never got actually uh, dismissed from that hospital uh, because I, I wouldn't, you know, 
Well, I had a pacemaker put in. But anyway, uh, they have a whole rigmarole, you know, apparently. You go down and then you wait on these cushy chairs or whatever, or in a wheelchair, whatever you are. And then they, you go through the exit, you go through exit procedures and I don't know what they, you know, what they go, if they, they're proud of it, they talked about it in there and on the TV screen and things about how they're, and they, the nurse said, oh, what if I, if I guarantee, you know, uh, guarantee you that you'll be the first person, and I knew that was, a, you know, something they couldn't, they couldn't keep. <clears throat> Depends on the order of the doctors, you know, and if the doctors have written the orders and all that kind of, she said, you'll be the first one, just me, and I'll just be down there, just when I thought, no, I'll be sitting down there unable to piss, afraid I'm going to vomit and die in the lobby and whatever, and I, so, so I left AMA, and like I said, I, if it hadn't been for my daughter, you know, she could drove down, and uh, whatever, if I'd have had to be, if I'd have been trying to find the Uber and have the Uber find me, and, but anyway, as, then when I'm up there in the room and I'm leaving, waiting for, well, Hillary, when she showed up, you know, didn't have to wait long, but, you know, when I, I'm waiting and the nurse, the one from Africa or whatever, uh, she came in when they were kind of negotiating with me or whatever, and I, well, I wasn't negotiating, but came in and said, you shouldn't leave. And I said, well, I just feel like I have to get out of here. I don't think I can make it until the morning and uh, whatever. And she said, well, the doctor said, and, and uh, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go home and take water pills. And she says, the doctor says that, you know, you'll die. And I said, well, then I'll die, but I'll die at home. And she just, uh, she was, she was mad. I think she thought that maybe somehow that she had something to do with it. And she really didn't. But I maybe had a little bit to do with it. It was just one of the little things, you know, the fact that I hadn't eaten for six days anything and that I just had all this trouble. Uh, and that they, you know, they took the catheter out then they were going to put one in like an hour or two back in. Um, so then when Hillary showed up, you know, I gathered my USB charging cables up and stuff, and uh, as we were leaving, there was a real nice nurse's aide there. She'd been in earlier in the evening. I hadn't had a bath in six days or whatever, and she'd come in earlier and said, uh, "Would you like? Would you? Uh, would you like for me to give you a bath and everything?" I said, "That would be wonderful." And I said, "I haven't had any in six days or whatever," and she said, "I'll come in later." And I said, "Okay." Anyway, she was out there. A, uh, you know, sitting over there, and the nurse that was the one from Africa was sitting there, or whatever. And when Hillary and I were leaving, and we're walking, the the nurse said, "I hope you're okay." And then as we walked down the hall and around a corner, Hillary said, "That that nurse. It sounded like she didn't. It, she." Sounded like she was hoping that you wouldn't be okay, and I said, "Yeah, she was." So anyway, I guess I've given this microphone a—I uh, haven't adjusted the settings or anything. I guess I've given it a workout, and I guess we'll call this story time. And of course, I'll turn off the ability to make any money from it because I talked about politics and because there was these little clips or whatever. And, uh, I can understand. I've, you know, uh, I can understand. Now, there are, as you know, probably, <sighs> organizations that are going to make, make money and they have the if, if there's any tune, if you whistle Yankee Doodle Dandy, or if you, there was a guy, what was he doing? A YouTuber, something. 
and the software claimed his whatever he did it was not he wasn't claimed his voice or something or rather yeah his voice or something that claimed as a copyrighted item and put a copyright claim against him or whatever I haven't had a lot of that because I've been careful about but anyway if I have if I talk politics usually I think always because YouTube what they'll do is say uh, not advertiser friendly and I can understand that uh, if I say things about Donald Trump uh, probably nobody you know maybe the people that run the company they might be well they couldn't be more liberal than I am but maybe they're very liberal and maybe they're Democrats and whatever and maybe they would they maybe they would go yeah I agree with you know Jim or whatever but they don't want their company advertising running because 29 or 30 percent of the viewers are going to be really angry and they'll take it out on the advertiser or whatever. So I can understand understand that. But I just go ahead and turn it off myself. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this video. And it's been uh, 56 minutes. So I'm still trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. I've been trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. I think I think since Moses was in the Sinai Desert receiving the Ten Commandments, I've been trying to get to 3,000 subscribers forever. I think Laurel and Hardy were just starting out in their career as comedians when I was trying to get 3,000 subscribers. It's been years. I've been just a few numbers below 3,000. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching.